if you're wondering if I realized that all through last week it said August instead of August I did realize it in editing also you are tilted why are you tilted that could be a metaphor for my life right now anyway thumbnail time let's get started I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mini Reads where I talk about books and things and I am not I'm not feeling so good lately honestly you know like you have I, I mean it's not nothing like crazy I don't think it's anything to worry about I think it's a, a mixture of the heat stuff that's been going on in my life that you guys all know about because I overshare um, that's a <laughs> that's a thing that I do but basically I'm just feeling okay-ish. So I saw this video by uh, Books with Emily Fox where she um, kind of reviews books that were just okay, that were not great, that were not amazing reads, but she thinks that you should read them. And I was like, that's a great metaphor for my life right now. <laughs> you know, it's, how am I doing? Just okay. But you know what? Sometimes it's okay to be just okay. So I have some books here. I have 10 books that are not like the best books that I've ever read, but I still think that you should read them because they are pretty good. They're like three stars. And I think like we have like the skewed perception of what three stars is. Three stars is I enjoyed it. I obviously own them, so they're not bad, but I'm not raving about them either. So the first book I have here, I have mentioned before, and it's Bioshock by John Shirley. Now, if you are unaware, this is a video game trilogy that is very popular, and it also happens to be my favorite video game of all time. Not the first one, the second one. But anyway, um, this tells the story of what happened before the first video game happens. So basically, this tells the story of this brilliant man who feels that the government is being like, is stopping people from being able to achieve the most that they can achieve by setting rules. So he basically makes this underwater crazy city called Rapture where he invites people to come live without religion, without really any political like um, government officials telling you what you can and can't do. Like, you want to experiment on puppies. Go ahead, you can experiment on puppies. Whatever you want to do. And it just tells how that goes to shit. Because if you've played the video game, this is not a spoiler. It goes to shit. People get really addicted to this drug that gives them superpowers and they start killing each other for it. And, you know, it's, I guess it tries to tell you what happens when your ambition comes without any kind of control. And I think this book is really does have something to say. It, I think it's a really like good little book, especially if you're if you're like a young person and trying to start to think politically and stuff like that. I'm not saying that I agree with political control over everything or anything like that, but I think it just has some really good concepts and ideas that I think you might enjoy. And it's a sci-fi because of course it's a city underwater, it's built to last underwater. And I like how like some people come here with this idea of like utopia in mind and what they find is if like for example you are allowed to kill a person because you don't agree with the way they're doing things and you know is that okay like and then there's this whole thing with bibles our bibles are not allowed so they bring them in as contraband it's it's a it's a good little book i mean like again it's not the best sci-fi i've ever read but it definitely for like for a book based on a video game, I think it does a really good job. The next one that I have might be a bit of a surprise because I have it really like well tabbed and I love like going like this to it, but it's uh, World War Z by Max Brooks. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> so in this um, world, there is a zombie apocalypse basically. And you get to see the zombie apocalypse from not the perspective of survivors, not like that, but you get to see it from a political standpoint. and. That's where the book, that's why the book for me is not that good because I don't want to hear about politics, but a lot of people might really enjoy that. And I think for a lot of people that don't realize how politics works or how, I, I just realized I just picked another book like to, to teach people about politicians and stuff like that. I think that this is about like a really good book for that kind of stuff, especially I think the 
parts that really got to me were were how much people were willing to do to get out of places that were really infected with the virus and how that kind of seems like a metaphor for how much people are willing to do today to get away from horrible things happening in their countries and how hard we make it for them. So I think this book this book is really good. I I I liked it. Again, I liked it, but I wasn't like, oh my god, I'm in love with this book. No, but I liked it enough to keep it, and I would like to reread it someday. I really like the survival stories more than anything, but um, I think the political stuff is really interesting and really cool, and I think Max Brooks definitely did a good job understanding how politicians work and how it's not as like... I don't know how to I don't know how to explain. It's not like how we see it, but there's like so much going on behind the curtain that we don't see. So I think this is definitely a really cool book to read. Um if you're sensitive to pandemic shit right now, I wouldn't read it, but maybe once the pandemic is done and and some of the points of view here are really 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 good. And it really reminded me of one of my favorite books of all time, which is called The Hot Zone, which is about the discovery of the Ebola virus. So yeah, World War Z by Max Brooks. A good solid three star read. Okay, the next book I have, I have it in Spanish. I actually don't remember the name in English because if you translate this, like Google Translate would, it says The Music of Silence, but I don't think that that's the name in English. So I'm just gonna insert a picture here for you to enjoy. That's the title. And this is by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, this is the story if you know, if you have read, um, what's it called? Um, a wise man, no, not a wise man's fear, the name of the wind. This is kind of between the name of the wind and a wise man's fear. This is like the King Slayer Chronicles 1.5. And this is the story of Ari. If you guys know, Ari is a character that appears in both books, and she is a friend. She's like a, a like a, like a very fairy esque magical friend to Kuo, and she is just. This is about her day-to-day -day life living in the underground or the underworld. I don't remember. I don't know what they call it because I've actually read these books only in Spanish. So this is a really fun, strange little book. Like, I, nothing really happens in this book. She makes some soap and she talks about like how she views the world and it's weird but it's weird in a really nice and magical way and yeah i i think this book is is it's like a nice way to be introduced to this world but without all of the bells and whistles of quotes point of view if you know what i mean um, it's very strange. It's like a strange little book. I recommend it just for just because sometimes you want to read something a little bit strange, but you don't want to commit to like a big book. And this book, you can read it in an afternoon. It's 130 pages. So yeah, again, a solid three stars. Kind of like my life right now. Okay, this one hurts a little bit, but for me, Rosewater was like a solid three star. But the reason I'm recommending it is because it was a three star to me, but I think it could be a five star for a lot of people. Rosewater is the story of this man who has kind of telepathic abilities and other people that have telepathic abilities. And there's this biodome in the middle of the city, not in the middle, but it's like right next to the city called Rosewater. And what happens is this biodome, I think once a year or something, opens up and releases some kind of thing into like the atmosphere and it cures people but it also brings people back from the dead as zombies so it's kind of weird but that's not the point of the story the point of the story is that this man gets caught up in some political like scheming spies sort of thing with people with superpowers it kind of reminded me now that i think about it like like you know how the umbrella academy had the commission like he gets involved with something like the commission something like that and he's like one of the most powerful um uh people that have this ability and he finds out that they're killing people like him so he's got like a whole thing going his girlfriend is like the ex-wife of a mobster and, and it, it's crazy like it's got so much 
action and so much fun and so much interesting stuff packed in this book the thing is i wanted this book to be something that it was not that's why it's here so for me it was a solid three star but i think for a lot of people this would be a five star read so this is me saying please read rosewater and enjoy it for what it is and not for what i wanted it to be which was i wanted it to be eco fiction which is more based on nature and stuff like that this is definitely not that book but i'm keeping it because i still think it's like a good solid awesome read it was just not the read that I wanted it to be. Next up, we have just a straight up fun book. It's like, there is like 0% of any thinking to be done with this book. And that is Rebel Rising by Beth Revis, A Star Wars Story. If you like Jin Erso, if you want to know more about Jin Erso, if you want to kind of tune out for a little bit and just kind of enjoy reading, you know and have fun with a story that is like you know there's there are no stakes she's gonna survive she's in the movie and this book picks up right where the movie you know when when in the movie this horrible incident happens and she goes like into a cave to hide i'm just you know, just in case you haven't seen the movie i don't want to spoil it but anyway it picks up right after that incident so this goes through her training, through her and her relationship with Saul Guerrero, what happened between her and Saul Guerrero, why they like are not on good terms when the other movie begins. No, it's the same movie, when, when Rogue One begins. It's just a fun, good time with some Star Wars stuff and some like romance thrown in there because is it really a YA if there's no romance? No, and this is totally a YA book that is fun and it really doesn't have um, like anything that you could be like oh let me just ponder about that for a moment no it doesn't this is just a fun good time and that's that's the point i don't think the book was trying to be anything else than that than just like a fun good time and that's it so if you're into that then you know and if you like star wars because i mean if you don't like star wars then maybe try don't try this one but if you like star wars this is like a really fun book for you to read. Especially if you like Jen Ursa, who is my favorite Star Wars character. So there's that. Oh God, it's hot. It's hot like a cow's on fire. And if you get that reference, baby, you put that down in the comments. Mm -hmm. All right, up next, a book I read recently, a book that you guys have seen before on this channel, and that is Autonomous by Annalie Newitz. This is, a <laughs> this is a book that is supposed to be about um, drug piracy and reverse engineering drugs and bringing down big pharma. But really, this book is just about sex. My cat's in the little box. Oh no, she's not. She's drinking water. So it's just about who's sleeping with whom and it's kind of... Fun, and I think it does bring up some interesting um, issues. I did a whole book talk about it. I'll link it up here. But it's not that good. Like, it's fine. It's it's a it's it's a three star read. Um, I think this book got like really like like I said before. Like I've said it a million times. This book would have been so much better if we would have been focused on the story that I forgot about halfway through. Like, I was like, why are we, oh, that's right, there's a story here. But um, it got too focused on who's sleeping with whom and who has sex with whom. And it just, that's why it's a three star read instead of like a four star or something. Because really, it just got boring. Also, is that a car? I live on the seventh floor and I could hear that bass drop. But anyway, yeah. Um, it was it, it was good. I like here's the thing. I wasn't bored reading this book. I wasn't bored, but I did kind of feel like the story just kind of gets a little bit lost, and I'm like, eh, you know. But it was good, and I think that out of all of these, this one has a lot to say about gender, gender identity, where does gender reside, like that kind of stuff. It's all in my book talk. I'll I'll leave it up there. All right. Next up, we have a graphic novel, and that is Thornhill by Pam Smee. Now, this actually, this is a real, like, it's good. Again, three stars or something being okay doesn't mean that it's bad. But 
here's the thing. I guess I wanted more out of this, but well, anyway, this is the story of Thornhill. Thornhill used to be an orphanage, but when orphanages kind of started like not being a thing and children started being placed in foster families and stuff, it gets it starts to get shut down. And well, there are girls in there, and it's the story of what happens to one particular one particular sorry one particular little girl who is in there, and um, she's going through a lot of bullying, and it's really sad. And along with that, there is another storyline of a girl who later on, like I think one happens in the eighties, and the other one is happening now in two thousand. Well in like 2018, 2019, or 2020. Well, I guess not 2020, but you know. And this little girl is really lonely and she moves across, like she moves across from where Thornhill is and uh, she starts to see the ghost of the little girl. This is just like one of those things that you can get through super fast. I love the drawing style. I like that it does have like, it does have some writing, like it, it's, it's, it does have like a novel feel, but then it also has a comic book feel. So it's actually a really nice book. I keep it, you've seen it a lot here. It's pretty big, but I got through this bad boy in one sitting. So it's it's good, it's it's good, it's three stars. It, again, this is just simply my cat, oh, bless you baby. But this is, it's just a three star read, maybe 3.5, I don't know, but yeah, I, I think it's fine and I was I was thinking of doing an on haul and I was looking at it like should I on haul you but I actually really like this book so no I'm not gonna on haul Thornhill. Next up, a book that I recently showed and I was like I love that book and I, re I really do like this book but I don't think that it's like such a great book like I don't think that it that it's amazing but I do recommend that you pick up 13 Days to Midnight by Leo Hunt. Now, Luke Cage, his, no, his name is not Luke Cage. <laughs> Luke just inherited six million dollars and eight ghosts that want to see him dead. So this is the story about Luke. Luke, um, basically, yeah, his dad was a very famous uh, ghost hunter. Oh, I didn't realize this. You get like inside here are all the ghosts. And his his dad had like a TV show and everything, but he was never in Luke's life. And then when he finally dies, Luke is set to inherit everything. Like he is the only heir to everything. Ex it, except that that inheritance also includes these ghosts. And these ghosts want him dead by Halloween. So he has to deal with this. Meanwhile, his mother, um, they kind of take her hostage, but I like how they explain that because they go with like, she's got really bad migraines. So like, she, this is something that happens to her where she like, I'm, I'm looking at my cat, she's going over there. I'm like, are you going into the litter box? <laughs> so she goes into like these horrible migraine attacks and she doesn't come out of her room for days, which as somebody that, that goes through migraines, that is basically what happens. So I really like this book. It's a lot of fun. This is definitely a Halloween read. It, it's, it's, it's fun, that's the thing. Like, it's really fun and it's got some interesting things in there about like um, what you have to give up in order to get some stuff and what you are willing to give up and what you are not willing to give up or what you're willing. I'm like this shiny all the while, sorry. <laughs> what you're not willing to sacrifice. But um, yeah, I think this is such a fun book and I, I don't see a lot of people talking about it ever and I got it for my birthday like three years ago and I really liked it. Next up we have Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. Yep, that's how we're gonna go with that name. But anyway, look, Starship Troopers, you can definitely <laughs> you can definitely see that the author was trying to shove military life down your throat but honestly i think the book is a lot of fun i think it's a really nice sci-fi read i think that a lot of people that enjoy like action pack sci-fi with some cool characters because i think the characters in here are really cool i also think the female characters in here are really cool but anyway this is the story about a guy that um joins the army to fight against aliens 
that is basically the storyline i promise you there's like not much else to say about it the main character's name is johnny rico he signs up because he wants the right to vote because in this world you don't have a right to vote unless you do two years of military service again the military stuff shoved down your throat but i think that there's so much like fun things in this book i think that the female characters in this book are really interesting i like how like usually in sci-fi females are all talked about their like long luscious locks and here they literally shave their heads because it's easier to fight that way so i thought that was really cool i thought that was a little excuse me <laughs> i thought that was a really nice touch and i just think that this is just like a fun sci-fi and if you're not into sci-fi but you're into like action i think that this is a cool book for you to read so yeah all right and the last book i have on this like okay-ish <laughs> i like it like oh these books are okay and if you see they're all down here like i didn't realize that i was putting like all my just okay books down here where my water is sitting at the moment but this is the darkest minds by alexander bracken now if you have been in on booktube or just like watch booktube for a really long time you know this shit was the shit for a while but honestly I think the first book at least is really just a cool road trip book like the first half of it is such a fun road trip adventure and I love that about it I love the road trip aspect I love the superpower aspect because you don't know this book is about like one day like a uh, like something happens and kids wake up with superpowers and they just round them all up and put them in concentration camps because you know totally parents would allow that but anyway um well you know they're, they're scared of them it's kind of like an x-men situation but um yeah the, the part with the road trip and like this girl who has been hiding her real powers and i don't know it's really really fun and interesting and then it gets to like the second half and then that just gets boring and the, the series is not worth your time but the first book i think is really like a fun x men -y sort of deal and i really really like it and again if you have if you have been one of those people that were like all over this book when booktube was like a thing like like six years ago you know let me know because i i actually was living in venezuela and i ordered this from the us to get to me and i really like the first book but again the 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 other books for me as far as i'm concerned are not worth your time they're boring and it's this was a time where YA was just basically let's rip off the Hunger Games and let's bring down the government and it's dystopian and it's just kind of a little bit boring so uh it's a fun read it's fine it's a-okay <laughs> I recommend that you read it this is the first one all right that's pretty much it for this video those are the 10 books that I think are just okay enough for you to read and again i just like how this video just mimics my life at the moment it's just okay we're not doing great but you know we're so, we're, we're okay we're okay <laughs> so anyway thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for commenting for subscribing i keep saying thank you guys so much for coming and i'm just waiting for somebody to make a funny stupid 12 year old joke down in the comments because i know i think it every time i say it but anyway yeah thanks guys for coming back to my channel um uh thank you yeah that's that's pretty much <laughs> i'm a child uh but no but seriously thank you for commenting and watching and doing you know all of this stuff that lets me know that somebody is out there and i'm not just screaming to avoid um it's really helped me get through these past couple of weeks where my life has been like just going like in a straight like downward slope <laughs> like, i know that sounds super dramatic but you know uh, i think in social media and stuff we just kind of avoid talking about like oh things are not okay but sometimes things are not okay so cats in the litter box so i'm just gonna bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that i post videos every mondays wednesdays and fridays yes even when i'm feeling like shit so, I'm very proud of myself for that, by the way. 
Anyway, without further ado, I bid you adieu, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye, guys.